Hi guys, today I'm reviewing the Instant Pot Mini. This is the smallest Instant Pot at 3 quarts. There are 6 and 8 quart versions. I have reviewed the 6 quart version and a link to that review is in the description below. This 3 quart measures 11.4 inches wide and 11.2 inches tall. It weighs 8.6 pounds. The two handles are convenient for carrying. The electrical cord is about 24 inches long. There's a quick start guide. The user manual is very detailed, describing the programs, modes, and cooking options. The recipe book has cooking times and water quantities listed. There are recipes for soups, chili, different types of rice, vegetables, meat, oats, and dessert. For creme brulee, you can use ramekins and put them in a steam basket. Any oven-proof dish can be used in this unit. The control panel has an LED display and many program keys. There's soup broth, meat stew, bean chili, rice, porridge, steam, pressure cook. Those seven buttons are all pressure cooking programs. The non-pressure cooking programs are slow cook, yogurt, and saute. The plus and minus keys are used to adjust the cooking time. When a cooking cycle is finished, the cooker will beep and go into keep warm mode only if you have already pressed the keep warm mode. You can turn the keep warm button on or off during cooking. The pressure level and cooking time can also be adjusted while you're cooking. The pressure level can be set to high or low for pressure cooking programs. There's also a choice of less, normal, or more depending on what you're cooking. The options are listed in the manual. For example, if you're using the meat stew program, the less mode gives you a soft texture, normal gives you very soft texture, and more is fall off the bone texture. There's also a delay start button, which you can use to set the delay time before cooking starts. The lid has a sturdy handle. Close and open are marked on the lid. Turn counterclockwise to open the lid. Just lift it straight up. You can put the lid on the side here and it will stand up. So you don't have to look for a place to put this hot lid down. Turn clockwise to lock the lid. Inside the lid is the sealing ring, which is removable for washing. It just pulls out. This is the anti-block shield, which pops out for cleaning. Before using the unit, make sure to put back the sealing ring and the anti-block shield. This is the steam release handle. It should be turned to sealing whenever you're pressure cooking. Sealing is marked right here. After you're finished cooking, this handle can be turned to the venting position marked here. And that lets steam out, which is called quick release. Or you can wait until the float valve here drops down on its own, which takes at least 10 minutes or longer depending on how much food you have in the cooker. The float valve comes up all the way when full pressure is reached inside the unit and goes down all the way when all pressure is released. That is the most important thing to remember with a pressure cooker. Don't open the lid until all the pressure is released and the float valve drops down. The condensation collector just snaps in. Squeeze the sides to pull it off for emptying and cleaning. The cooking pot is stainless steel. There's a maximum marking inside of two thirds and there's also a half marking. Don't fill above the max line. If you're cooking beans, rice, or other foods that expand, don't fill above the half marking. The steam release handle is removable. It just sits on top here. It doesn't lock. It's supposed to be loose. When you first get the unit, wash the pot, the lid, condensation collector, trivet, plastic measuring cup, spoon and ladle, steam release handle, and the anti-block shield in warm soapy water. Whenever you put the pot in the unit, make sure that the outside and bottom are completely dry. It's recommended to do an initial test run to check if the cooker is working properly. Connect the cord. Measure three cups of water with the included cup. Pour it in. Lock the lid. The steam release handle should be turned towards ceiling. Press the steam button. And adjust the time to two minutes. After 10 seconds, the preheating cycle starts and the display will say on. You can see the float valve is down, the unit beeped, and you can see two minutes displayed. The cycle ended and it automatically switched to keep warm mode. This initial process took exactly 10 minutes. Now I'll hit cancel. 
You can see the float valve is all the way up. Turn the handle to venting using tongs. This will release the pressure. It took about 10-15 seconds to release all the pressure and the float valve dropped down. Now it's safe to open the lid. I'll discard the water and then test out the unit by making rice. When cooking rice, measure the rice and water using the same cup, whether it's your own or this included one. I measured two full cups of rice in this container. This holds 180 milliliters. I washed the rice and soaked it in cold water for 15 minutes. I've drained it, put the rice in, and pour in three cups of water measured using this cup. This is the exact recipe from the recipe book for basmati rice, which is a long grain rice. Lock the lid. Turn the handle to ceiling. Press pressure cook. And set for four minutes. After you're done cooking the food, there are three ways to open the cooker. The quick release is the fastest. You press cancel and then turn the steam release handle on the lid to the venting position. Using tongs because it's hot. The second method is the natural release. Press cancel and wait for the pressure to come down on its own. This can take 10 minutes, 20 minutes, 30 minutes, depending on how much food is in the cooker. And the last method is the 10 minute natural release method. That's what I'm gonna use with this rice. After the four minutes are up, the cooker will go into keep warm mode, and then you just count 10 minutes. Press cancel and turn the steam release handle to the venting position. That's the recommended method for this rice recipe. The cycle has ended and the unit is in keep warm mode. I'm gonna set my timer to 10 minutes. You can also use the display to keep time because once you're in keep warm mode, the display will start counting up. It's been 10 minutes, now we can release the steam. First, press cancel. I like that the pot is stainless steel, so I don't have to worry about scratching it. I can use any kind of utensil I want. There's no rice stuck to the bottom. It's cooked. It's cooked perfectly. From start to finish, it was 25 minutes. Next up, I'll make chicken curry to go with this rice. Make sure the bottom of your pot is dry. To make the curry first, I need to saute some ingredients. Press saute, and normal is already chosen. That's for regular browning. Now the display shows hot, that means we can start to cook. Pour a few tablespoons of oil in. I'll put in some whole spices. Now I'll add onions, garlic, ginger, and green chilies. Saute until golden brown. While you're sauteing, you can change the setting to more, which I've just done because I do have a lot of onions and I want them to cook faster. Keep pressing saute to choose less normal or more. When you're using the saute function, it's just like using a regular pot on the stove. And the amount of time to saute these onions will be the same, whether it's on the stove top or in the instant pot. When using the saute function, don't put the lid on. You can, however, use a glass lid with a venting hole. The onions are done. Now I'll turn the saute to normal. And it'll also display the time that's left in the saute mode. The max is 30 minutes. I put my ground spices in. Chopped tomatoes. this until the tomatoes are soft. If you have a glass lid with a vent hole, this would be the time to use it. It'll just help the tomatoes cook a lot faster. The tomatoes are soft, now we can add some water and the chicken. It's recommended to add at least one cup of water or other liquid so there's enough steam to cook under pressure. I'll add two cups. If there are any brown bits on the bottom, just scrape it all up. Now I'll add the chicken. You want to go only up to the max line. This is a whole chicken cut up and marinated. Put a little bit more water, maybe half a cup. So total two and a half cups of water. 
In a stovetop pressure cooker, I would put water just to cover the chicken, so I'm doing the same here. The amount of chicken in here right now is about two and a half pounds, a little over a kilo. Now I wanna hit cancel to turn the saute function off. Lock the lid, turn the steam release handle to ceiling, press pressure cook. The default is high for the pressure and normal. And set the time to 10 minutes. The cycle's ended, I'm gonna hit cancel. Use the quick release method. The float valve has dropped down, now we can open the lid. The meat is cooked. If you wanna reduce the liquid of any dish that you've just cooked, press saute. I'll choose more and cook this down to the consistency you'd like. I'll add a little bit more salt. The liquid has reduced and I've pressed the cancel button. I'll add some chopped cilantro. And the chicken curry is ready. The meat is incredibly soft and delicious. After the unit goes into keep warm mode, it'll stay on for 10 hours and then turn off. All the removable parts are dishwasher safe. Wipe the inside of the unit and outside down with a damp cloth and dry. Although this instant pot is compact, it still cooks enough food for about four people. Unless you have a very big family, this instant pot should be enough for your cooking needs. If you wanna try this mini out, I've put a link in the description below. Subscribe so you can reviews of products that you use every day before you buy them. If you found this video useful, give it a thumbs up and share it. I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.